In this video, I'm going to take you through how to actually consolidate all of your wallets that you're using for the scavenger mining event all into one wallet. Later, when we're going to claim all of these in the Glacier Drop, it, it's uh, going to be costly if you have a lot of wallets open. If you are browser mining with 10 or even 15, 20 wallets, uh, every 90 days, you'll need to go through the claiming process for each one of those wallets, and it's going to cost you ADA. And if you don't have much ADA for those transaction fees to claim, it's going to add up. Plus, it's a bit of a laborious task to go through and do all of that. If you're comfortable with that, that's totally fine. Uh, just watch over the video. You might find something useful. But if you are comfortable with claiming for 20 or whatever wallets you were using in that mining event, then that's totally cool. Go ahead and do it that way. But this uh, you have a limited amount of time. You have up to the 22nd at the latest to do all of your consolidating of your uh, wallet addresses. Now, this is uh, something I went through yesterday in my uh, news update video, and this is a documentation around the consolidation. This is this you can find at midnight.gd. And in that video I did yesterday, I went through Bob's Shielded Bob's here video about how to build the transactions. So essentially what you need to do is go through here, uh, this is the documentation, and build up this particular transaction here, uh, depending on what uh, operating system we are, but uh, you bring a post request, you got the address, you got the donate to endpoint, your recipient address, your donor address, and then your signature. And, and a lot, of, I know a lot of people find that too hard, too difficult. So this is what I put together here. This is the scavenger rewards colors consolidation interface that I put together, it just builds that transaction there. So this transaction that you see here with the recipient, the donor, and then their signature just is pieced together here. So that's the recipient address, this is the donor address, and then your wallet that you can connect to then sign that particular transaction and say that, yep, it, it, this is all good to go. So let me just show you exactly how this works here on this little demo. You can get to this at learncardano.io slash consolidate.html. Links down below in the show notes for you guys. But let me just get this up. So I've got my Lace wallet here. I, I have to just switch screen so you can see this better. There we go. So now I can click on my Lace wallet and I've got a whole bunch of test accounts here. So I'm just going to open up this one. I, th I think I've already used this one here, but I'll show you how it works. I'm, I'm going to click on this one here and I'll get my address from this, which is that one. And I can't remember what I used for what. So I'm going to make this one the donor address. So where it's coming from. And then I'll use my other address here, number nine, as the one that is going to receive the recipient address for all these. So I'll just paste that in there. Okay, so that's the receiver one. That's the donor one. Now I have to switch back to the donor address. So uh, wallet A. Maybe I should have swapped this around in the. It's okay. It's too late now. It works. I know this works. I can go back to wallet 10 here. And then what I need to do now is click on lace, click on connect wallet. So now it's connected to the, uh, the interface here. If you are connecting for the first time, a prompt will come up saying, do you want to allow Lace Wallet to, uh, this website to access Lace Wallet? So you just need to click yes. And here now I can click on sign and consolidate and you get this wallet pop up. So in Bob's video, this is the uh, confirmation that you'll see. So this is the address, this is address one, and this is the data that you're signing. So you're not signing, you're not sending any assets, you're just confirming with an on-chain message. And here the data says, assign accumulated scavenger right, rights to this receiving address. So double check that when you're doing this. So double check that the receiving address is correct. 784R, 784R, and then you can click on confirm. Sign the transaction with your wallet password, and we are done. Now this error here that's come up, I've already done this already with this particular address. So the original address, that um, is that one there already has an active donation assigned to uh, that address there. So anything that the, the platform is doing, it will give you a console update, a uh, console output here. So you know exactly what's going on. Um, if you want, you can, if you're inclined, you can click on 
inspect element and click on console and it will give you all the error messages and everything that's coming out of the um, interface as well. So it's essentially anything that you see up here is an output from down here in the console coming directly from the API. Now I built this because um, I needed to do all of this myself and uh, you know it was just taking me a bit of time. So I just slapped it together. And I thought it was a useful tool. If you want to check all the code, you can do so. I put together a little bit of um, instructions here on my X post on how to go through and uh, do this. So you can just follow that quite easily. All the code is on GitHub as well. So if you don't trust that uh, uh, what I'm running here on my platform and you want to see exactly what it is doing, you can download the code yourself and run it on your own environment. It does require a part of server side coding because I am proxying or sending via a proxy to the Midnight Scavenger Hunt um, API. And that is because I'm just running this on my own domain name. And when you're send, running on something on your own domain name or even a local host and you're trying to send it somewhere else, you come across this thing called a cross-origin resource sharing issue where the, um, the Scavenger Hunt API can't be included onto your website for sending. So I had to build this little proxy. Um, now, a lot of people will castrate me for this, but I built it in WordPress as a plugin. WordPress is life for me. So, so anything I do is, you know, in the WordPress ecosystem. So hence it's um, all WordPress based. Um, so <laughs> if you want, you can get this code here. It's a content plugin area, scavenger donate proxy. You can get that, refactor it into any other language, into Next.js, whatever you want. Um, and then go that way. So I've given a, a little bit of an outline here of the issue of uh, cause and what you can do to get around it if you want to write your own. Um, but yeah, that, that's the consolidation tool in general. And hopefully you guys find it useful. And if you want to use it, go ahead. Um, let me know how you go with it. Um, I did do a little donation thing down here, buy me a coffee, or if you prefer just sending Ada to Rug Me Daddy, you can do so as well. Now, the really exciting thing about this is that we have the Midnight Summit going on at the moment as well. And the announcement date for all of this, when the Night Token will be live and active, is the 8th of December. Really, really exciting. It's uh, about three weeks away from the time of recording this. So really exciting stuff. Uh, the roadmap for the Midnight Network has been put out as well. So you can check out this document, um, this document, this post, this article that was put out as well. Phase one is in this uh, upcoming quarter in uh, December, and then there's a slow ro rollout over next year. So we should see all of this uh, pretty, pretty um, active uh, over the next year. So I'm pretty excited about that. Now, the Midnight Summit looks absolutely amazing. This was a private event, and from Sebastian's photos here, uh, you can see it's quite a big turnout for a private event. So a lot of uh, leading industry people in the blockchain space are there, plus a lot of crypto media uh, types are there as well. Now, I thought this was quite interesting here. This is, th th this is quite a few prominent people in the development space and crypto space. Mert here is the probably number one person that hates on Cardano every single day he thinks it's shit so um considering he's the founder of solana he, he would think that but here he is joining in on a panel with um let me just read this for you when i started in crypto i did not think i'd be on a random zoom conference with the inventor of javascript and firefox discussing zcash with the guy who co-authored the llm paper that this is like really mind-boggling stuff. So super bullish there to have Mert on this panel here for midnight. So really, really exciting stuff there. Now, the other thing that was asked of me is how to update Fetcher Box so you have the latest version of the miner that has the updated consolidate mining interface. Now, what you need to do is back up your current uh, wallet and, and set up within the Fetcher bots ecosystem you know, with the interface. You can find that under my documents and then in the folder, Midnight Fetcher Bot. You have a secure folder 
and a storage folder. These two folders are your uh, wallets uh, uh, or the wallet that you've registered and also a storage for where all the um, errors are, the mining config and all the receipts. So all the data that you have um, uh, generated for each one of the solutions that you found. So it's kind of important that you keep this one here. Um, I would, what I would do is just do a zip backup of that. So you can go to this particular storage folder, for example, and click on, where is it? Compress, compress to zip file. And that will uh, compress all those files into this file there. Um, you can do that multiple times whenever you need to get that back up and um, stored, restored if you need to. Now, when you're updating the fetcher bot, just go back to the GitHub repo here and download the code again. Uh, you may have used GitHub itself. And if you're using GitHub, um, you would know how to update this. But if you are not using GitHub and you're just downloading it, just download it again, put it into a different folder. So here I can put it onto my desktop here. It's nice and clean at the moment. I've got clean up folder. I had icons everywhere. I just piled it all in. Anyway, um, here I can now unzip this. And I know now this version here is the latest version and it is all uh, up to date with everything that the guys have done. So now I, instead of running your fetcher bot from that previ previous install, wherever it might be, run it from this particular folder here. So now you can go through here and go through that setup process again. So just run the setup and you run it from this folder. What the bot will do now is connect back to your original uh, folder for your, my documents where this is. And you'll be, um, and it will pick up any data that you have stored back there. Of course, you need to stop your bot um, if it's still running in the background. So here I've got mine running in the background here. So it hasn't been stopped yet. So I can't update it yet. But you would have one of the windows like this. You press any key to stop all services. Press the key and it will stop the services. Um, the next server will disappear as well. And then you'll be able to run the setup for the new bot here and go forth. So that's it. That's all you need to do to run an uh, update on the fetcher bot. So hopefully you found that guide useful. You found it, hopefully you find this tool useful. Uh, if, like I said, if you don't trust the code that I've put together, you can audit it yourself. You can run it yourself on your own hardware, put it through chat GTP, do a audit there if you can't read the code yourself, um, or go through the process and do it all manually, uh, whatever you're most comfortable with. Uh, now I just want to add in one more thing. When you are with the um, any wallet connectors in the Cardano ecosystem, so this message is specifically for anyone in the EVM space, when you're connecting a Cardano wallet, any transaction that happened has to be signed. So you'll see that pop-up come up and then you'll have to sign it. So in the Cardano ecosystem, we don't have the thing of wallet drainers unless you sign for it. So in the EVM space, you can connect your MetaMask wallet and suddenly all your assets are gone. That doesn't happen in the Cardano space unless you look at that pop-up and say, hey, this pop-up saying transfer all my assets away and then you sign it. That's, that's how it works in the Cardano space if you are um, in a wallet draining environment. Just don't sign that message. Like I said, when the pop-up comes up, check, check, check and double check that it's doing exactly what you're expecting it to do. Okay, that's it. That's all I have for this particular video update and tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, notification bell, uh, buy me a coffee, Patreon, YouTube memberships, all that down below. And if you kind of can't do that, just hit that thumbs up. Appreciate anything that you guys can do out there to get this video out there and support the channel. You guys are awesome and I'll see you in the next video.